This man is preparing for tomorrow. These men are prepared today as they ready one of our newest strategic aircraft, the world's first supersonic bomber, the B-58 Hustler. The large detachable pod carried under the fuselage houses part of the weapons system, or it may transport extra fuel. The ship's complement, a crew of three riding in separate tandem cockpits. Powered by four jet engines at supersonic speed, the first prototype of the Hustler made its initial flight on November 11, 1956. Within three months, it had completed 17 flights, totaling 51 and a half hours. A 20 millimeter multi-barrel cannon in a flexible mounting in the tail augments other armament, which can include nuclear or conventional weapons. These, an electronic countermeasure system, and intercept equipment may be part of the cargo of the underbelly disposable pod. In-air refueling gives the 58 an intercontinental range, a monument to aeronautical design and engineering. The speed, range, and deterrent power of the B-58 Hustler makes it a welcome addition to our arsenal of strategic weapons. It also graphically demonstrates the technology that has led the United States Air Force to the doorway of immediate space travel. These men are prepared today. These are members of one of Tactical Air Command's highly mobile fighter units in the midst of a composite airstrike force deployment exercise. The composite airstrike force is more than just combat aircraft and reconnaissance planes. It includes ground support equipment and personnel for maintaining aircraft in the field for weeks, even months at a time. Always on the alert and ready to move when the order is issued, tactical units such as this can immediately spring into action and in a matter of just a few hours be in place at overseas bases ready for combat. Support equipment is quickly loaded aboard tactical transport aircraft. Each man knows exactly what is expected of him, and he does it immediately and without question. This is the kind of teamwork that has made our nation great. It is emblematic of the cooperative spirit of Americans and is the kind of teamwork that has brought about the technological developments that have led the United States Air Force today to the threshold of space. This man presents a composite picture of the Air Force yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is Captain Joseph Kittinger, Jr who in this age of jet aircraft and ballistic missiles uses the age-old technique of balloon ascension to make scientific investigations in the outer researches of the Earth's atmosphere. On the 17th of August, 1960, in an open gondola balloon, Captain Kittinger ascended to the astonishing height of 102,800 feet. He then stepped from his lofty perch and hurtled earthward, free falling 17 miles, during which he reached a speed of about 320 miles per hour. The small stabilizing parachute that he was testing prevented him from spinning but did little to slow his free fall. At 17,500 feet, his main chute opened and brought him safely to the ground eight and a half minutes later. Captain Kittinger's record shattering exploits symbolize the courageous spirit of the men of today's United States Air Force, men whose daring and skill are setting the stage for future airmen to reach beyond the bounds of this planet to explore the dark caverns of space. These men are prepared today. They are Air Force pilots testing human reactions to zero gravity or weightlessness. 
with the imminent prospect of manned orbital flight, during which an astronaut will be subjected to long periods of zero gravity, his reaction to the sensation of weightlessness and his ability to perform manual operations are questions which require an immediate answer. The Aerospace Medical Laboratory, Aeronautic System Division at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base is currently using a modified C-131 as a zero-G laboratory. Through tests conducted in this and other aircraft, our scientists are learning what effects prolonged exposure to zero gravity will have upon man, psychologically and physiologically. Man's tolerance to a weightless environment and his ability to readjust to the normal gravitational state may very well determine whether or not interplanetary travel will become a reality. These men are seeking the answer through the same kind of technical ingenuity that has led the United States Air Force today to the threshold of space. These are men prepared for today with the kind of technical ability and scientific know-how that is characteristic of the United States Air Force in this dawn of the nuclear aerospace age. They are Air Force medical researchers, systematically applying their skills in an effort to determine the physiological and psychological effects of space travel upon man. Their goal, to develop a reliable system for keeping future space pilots in a normal, comfortable environment. A heat chamber is used to test a full pressure suit and closed circuit oxygen system. Pilot and equipment are subjected to 160 degree temperature. This 30 foot high apparatus provides data on man's reaction to blast off buffeting and weightlessness and the effects of vertical acceleration. While the physical and psychological effects of prolonged vibration are studied, a breathing apparatus measures reaction of lungs and other organs. The rocket sled tests man's endurance to the rapid acceleration of blast off and the intense deceleration of re-entry. Weightlessness research provides an insight into the zero G problems man will encounter during his outer space travel. These are some of the men and equipment they have used to help lead the United States Air Force today to the threshold of space. These people are prepared today. These are Air Force scientists engaged in solar research. Their aim to determine the effect of certain solar phenomena on communications and weather on the Earth. The scene of their activity is an observatory atop a 9,200-foot mountain in Sunspot, New Mexico. Here, clarity of the sky facilitates observation of the sun's corona, its faint outer atmosphere. A powerful 16-inch telescope, the world's largest coronagraph, is pivoted and powered to follow the sun, observing solar disturbances of all kinds, while a motion picture camera records the sun's activity for later study. A disk in the center of the optical system eclipses the heart of the sun, leaving only the corona for observation. Solar flares, at present the most important single phenomenon, fling great quantities of energy into space, which about 20 hours later cause violent disruptions of the Earth's communications and other phenomena. Scientific investigation into disruptive solar activity and its effect on the Earth's environment is helping unravel the mysteries of the universe. It is another example of the kind of technology that has led the United States Air Force and the nation to the brink of space. These men are prepared today to strike back against any aggressor. Their weapon is the mighty Atlas, now operational in Strategic Air Command having a range of well over 5,500 miles. It's a true intercontinental ballistic missile. 
it races toward its target at 20 times the speed of sound. The Atlas has an inertial guidance system dependent upon a series of gyro stabilizers. The system cannot be jammed by enemy countermeasures and can operate well beyond the range of radio or radar guidance systems. The external skin of the Atlas is so thin that it has to be pressurized during ground transport to preserve its shape. Although it was developed primarily as a strategic weapon, the Atlas plays a key role in space exploration. It was the Atlas which first orbited the Earth, echoing the voice of President Eisenhower as he expressed our nation's wish for peace on Earth, goodwill toward men everywhere. This is the kind of technology that has brought the United States Air Force to the brink of space. This is Lowell Thomas saying, so long until tomorrow. Yeah.